Now, buddy, the A350 truly is an incredible airliner model. I love this plane. There's the A350-900 that's a bit smaller, and there's the A350-1000, which is quite large. Genuinely, this plane is enormous, and you really underestimate the size if you haven't seen it before. I mean, look at this. This is the A380, and this is the A350 right next to it. Yes, both the 777-300, it kind of shares the throne for being the longest and, well, largest airliner with two engines. I mean, look at how big these planes are, especially in comparison to like the 7878. Now, this plane is truly amazing. Look at the beautiful cockpit. This is the state-of-the-art airplane. But the A350-1000 has one problem, and it is the new Boeing 777X that is going to be flying probably next year. Why? Because it is huge! As you can see, it's longer than the 747, and it can have up to 425 seats, which is more than the 747, as you can see, which can only do 410 seats. Which puts the A350, which is trying to be in the same market, in a lot of trouble because this plane can only seat 369 people, which is why Airbus CEO Guillaume Fourier I think this year announced some interesting ideas because they want to do what Boeing also did with the 777, which had a huge amount of growth over time. They started with the 777-200, then the 300 came, then the even bigger free freeter. What came? And then of course, the 777X. This thing is so much longer. The idea to stretch the Airbus A350. Everybody, the A350-2000. And yes, everybody, they are actually working on it, but it's going to have more capacity, up to 410 seat, almost as much as the 777X. And so this is what the A350-2000 could look like. Around about six meters longer, quite a bit, while being able to fit nearly 50 more passengers. This would make this plane even longer than the 777X, which is gonna be 76 meters. And this makes me a little bit worried about how easy it's going to be to built this plane. And of course, everybody, it wouldn't be Swiss as one if we found that out today. Everybody, I've built the Airbus A350-2000. Let's take a look. And everybody, this... <laughs> This is quite interesting indeed. This is quite a pencil plane now. You know what? I feel like this is not going to fly very well because all we did was practically elasticate the fuselage of this plane by around 30 feet, 10 meters or so. We've made a plane that's probably a little bit longer, to be honest, than what Airbus is imagining for the 2000. But genuinely, other than the fuselage, I did nothing. I didn't build any new engine. I didn't make the wing any bigger. And this thing is going to fly so well were bad. This plane most probably has the smallest fuselage to tail wing ratio ever. This thing is going to fly very badly, but as you can see, stuff moves, moves, stuff works, and what also works is that we've got a lot of people. Seriously, this plane, the A350-2000 is the longest passenger airliner ever, and it really is a field trip from the front to all the way in the back. Happy people sitting in front. Yes, your premium echo. Look at you being rich. Uh, now, I have quite a long economy section here in this airplane. It's uh, quite ridiculous, to be honest. But you know what I thought it would be funny? I know the modeling is a little bit broken, but this is all fully simulated. And here we go. After literally five minutes, we've reached the end of the cabin. You can barely see to that you cannot see to the front. I mean, literally now all the way back in this airplane, we're in a different time zone. This is just insane. Anyway, I don't know how this plane flies. Let's go ahead and see and find out. All right, here we go. Full power into those engines. Now we still have those Rolls Royce trains Trent engines that the A350 normally has, which is going to be very scary. We weigh substantially more, and we all, always have to take off this plane at maximum weight that these wings could carry. And the engines, this is just not going to go well, is it? Although we're actually accelerating relatively okay, these tiny wings right here will definitely struggle to create lift. All right, come on, you can do it. We're going toga, by the way, full power. Okay, let's go ahead and take off. And of course, there, the nose landing gear is also in a different time zone than the main landing gear. And Jesus Christ, I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. Oh my God, I mean, in all fairness, I think we might have taken off without flaps, but... Holy moly, this thing won't go off, and we're about to do a tail strike. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's kind of worked. All right, we've used the entire runway of Los Angeles International Airport, which is insane. This plane is absolutely unusable. Let's go ahead and put the landing gear up. There we go. At least that works uh, quickly. Now, by the way, I'm really sorry about the modeling. Uh, 
Oh, the nose bill is poking through. It's just, uh, yeah, well, this is visually. This thing is actually realistically simulated, and we have pretty much the worst clamp performance I've seen ever in my entire life. But this plane can fly, you know. Um, now, what I'm trying to prove here is that the A350-2000 would definitely need a larger wing, but that is easier said than done. Why? Because we're rocking the A350-1000 wings right now, and so our wingspan is 64.75 meters. Why is it exactly that amount? Well, it is so that the A350-1000 can still land at Class Echo airports. See, different airports can accommodate different wingspans. There's all the way from A to F. And Class Echo is most international airports, but Class Foxtrot, not really, because you need very, very big gates and taxiways to accommodate type Foxtrot airplane, these big ones. And the A350 barely can also land at Echo, which means that if you were to expand the A350 fuselage and put it to a 2000, you'd have to make the wing bigger. And so this plane can pretty much land nowhere. And this is where Boeing is so ahead of Airbus with a 777X that has literal folding wingtips. When the wingtips are folded, the wingspan is 64.85 meters. Perfect for fitting an airport. And it can extend its wingspan to 71 meters. What I'm saying is that probably for the A350-2000, Airbus would have to have the same kind of design. So you'd have to redesign the whole wing and the engines and the horizontal stabilizers, and literally everything. I don't know if this, this plan is going to happen. It's a very long-term project. Anyway, um, let's go and continue this very unflyable airliner. I'm a little bit afraid, though. Um, you know what? I know I fly to this airport all the time, Corfu, but I think this could be an interesting test. Now, let's see what the speeds are on this plane, because I felt like we need to fly at extremely high speeds to even maintain lift. Although I will say, something that's nice about having a very small, stubble wing like this is that your plane is very maneuverable on the roll axis. We can nearly maneuver for like a fighter that's not very nah no one cares generally in order to fly this plane properly we have to probably fly it at 200 knots because that wing is just so tiny although i'd have to say i think we can fly this at 170 and we're okay like it flies it's just that the pitch i'm fully i'm fully using the joystick right now has literally no meaning to the flying of this plane that's insane i can't oh god we need more speed we need 150 knots it's not possible this is the, this literally do the concord in terms of his flying characteristics like the pitch is so useless oh what is that noise why is this plane broken okay reverse thrust now happening let's go and do this holy moly all right let's do it pull it off full into the braking which at least is working so that is okay right well there we go we have been able to stop just fine although our brakes are on fire that kind of happens sometimes but like no kidding we will be we will never be able to take off here although this runway should normally i mean it's not very long but it should definitely be enough for a plane like this now while there are ideas to that actually sound a bit better than what i did and that's completely stretched the fuselage way too much i think it will be very interesting how this project turns out i mean making bigger engines that's not really the issue but how do you fit 50 50 more passengers on board an airplane without having to make the wing bigger. Do you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and take off, uh, which probably won't be possible. Well, at least something we could definitely do is make the horizontal stabilizer bigger. It's just insanely funny how like unusable it is. So we've crashed. Ah, uh, great. Can we talk about the graphics of X-Plane 12 nowadays, by the way? This looks amazing. And don't even get me started on like Nice Airport. I mean, the A380 can fly here, and I'm pretty sure this is not gonna work well. Like, yeah, yeah, put like the flaps to like one, okay. But you need like 200 knots to like actually lift off properly. Come, like it's not working. It's just not working. Only at Los Angeles is extremely long runway. We could somehow get this airplane off the ground or maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes, yes, everybody. Look at that, it's success. But we are not able to like lift off very well at all. Interestingly, it wasn't really the engines that didn't provide enough power. Well, okay, it was also that for sure, but it's just the wing and especially the horizontal stabilizer that doesn't have enough authority. This is surely an interesting experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe Airbus will find a way to engineer this plane properly without making it fly. They shouldn't hire me. 
that's what I said in this video, basically. So, but thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Durham, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.